the first thing we want to do, actually I should back up for a second, when you get the package there will be a spacer inside here that keeps the the open end stable during shipping in case it gets crushed we don't want it to to break so we've got a little reinforcing thing in there uh, just pop that piece out and discard it or if you can find some use for it that would be cool too but uh, it's not necessary for the installation so the first thing we want to do is take a tube slide it on the receiver and this is also, I should also note, this is designed to work with a carbine or commercial buffer tube only. This one is a commercial uh, buffer tube and you can tell by the slash cut at the end of it. A, a uh, mil spec uh, buffer tube will be a little bit shorter and it'll have a square cut at the end. So this will not work with a regular pistol buffer tube or an A2 or any other type of buffer tube only carbine buffer tubes, mil spec or commercial. So, all right, back to business. So we slide the tube on there. Should be a nice tight fit. Should go all the way up to the front. Next thing you want to do, I'm going to put it like this. This is the little spacer that's going to go in the inside here. There are two steel sleeves. These are stainless steel, so they won't rust they go into these two holes they're in there loosely for a reason all these buffer tube manufacturers they're always a little bit different so we tried to build in as much uh, you know the maximum amount of usability as possible so they're a little bit floppy but the, the, it does work you may also have to if it if you have a still a little bit more material that's in your way like this ramp here sometimes uh, causes a problem with installations. You may need to take a file or some sandpaper and just take some take some material away from the back corner. I actually had to do it here just a tiny bit. You can probably see the the file marks on there. Just a little bit to make it all work right. So take that guy you drop it in the gap with this little thin part facing forward so it jumps over the castle nut there. Just like that. Uh, for tools, you need two 1 16th Allen wrenches. So, using one Allen wrench as a hold, I stick it in the hole and hold on to that. Just put a little pressure on the sleeve while I thread in the screw on one side just to get it started. Okay. Once I have that first side, I can go ahead and put the second side on. And let's do the same thing here. Just use the wrench to hold the sleeve while you get a little bite on there. Okay, whoops. Put that second screw on there, and then using both wrenches at the same time, just tighten them both up and crank it down till it stops. You'll see the the gap pulls in pretty tight. Uh, there may be a little space depending on whether you're using a mil spec or commercial, but whether there's a space or not is not the issue. The um, Basically, you have a steel-on-steel -steel connection, so the, the plastic is not going to uh, cause you any problems there. So tighten those down. Close that gap up. Nice and tight. Take a quick look. Make sure you're making face contact either at the castle nut or at the, the uh, end plate. doesn't matter which one, as long as it's on there tight. It's not going to push off, it's not going to pull off, it's on there good and solid.